Did you know that there are many different types and techniques of unit testing to make sure that the changes you made to your code are working as expected? This is John from Java Code Geeks and today I'm going to show you how to write clean and efficient code in Java by using unit testing types and techniques. This video has been sponsored by DeepBlue. DeepBlue is a UK-based startup spun out of the University of Oxford in 2016, which offers a free AI-powered unit test generation tool for Java developers. DeepBlue technology is developed by a team of leading experts in software verification and synthesis. More specifically, software testing is the number one bottleneck in DevOps. This AI, or in other words, Deep Blue Cover, has the ability to automatically write suites of unit tests for you in Java that would otherwise take days or weeks to write manually and delivers human readable code to increase your code coverage while ensuring you don't break anything along the way. Deep Blue Cover integrates via Git and can be adapted to your workflow, allowing you to continually create unit tests and have truly continuous integration. Furthermore, on their website there is a collection of webinars and tutorials in order to walk you through the first steps in using the Diff Plus cover and impart knowledge to you about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence tools and unit testing tactics. Of course, Diff Plus first AI-powered automated Java unit testing solution is now free and it is available as a plugin of IntelliJ, the most popular IDE for enterprise Java to use with all Java code. Last but not least, each of you has the chance to get 3 free months of Diff Plus Professional Edition which offering test writing for packages, identification and support by signing up using the link in the description. So do not waste your time, click on the link and try it now! There are basically 3 types of unit testing which can help the developer to test each unit of the system in isolation. Each of these types covers different requirements and ensures its proper functioning. Now, complementary to this video tutorial, you can find related articles and resources in the description below. Of course, you can visit Java Code Geeks to stay up to date with everything Java related. Now, before we continue, if you guys like these guides and videos, take a minute to subscribe, like and hit that notification bell just so you know when the next video is up. So with no further ado, let's get started. The unit testing types are mainly categorized into three parts, the black box testing, the white box testing and the great box testing. The black box testing it is used by the developers to test the user interface of the software with its inputs and outputs. The white box testing which is another important unit testing type that helps the developers to test the functional behavior of the software and to validate their execution. And last but not least the great box testing which is the combination of the white box and and the black box testing and help the developers to create test suits, test cases to perform a risk assessment and to test various test methods. Black box testing gets its name from the concept of a black box through which the developer cannot decipher the internal concept of the box and can only see and examine the external structure and appearance of the software. The black box testing method is a testing method where the system under test is testing without worrying about the implementation, the internal path knowledge and the internal code structure of the software. This method of testing is completely based on the specifications and requirements of the software. The black box testing focuses upon the output and the input of the software which can be any software like a website, operating system or a database. There are many different types of black box testing such as the functional testing. This kind of testing is related to the functional requirements of the system. Uh, the functional testing is concerned only the functional requirements of the system and covers how well the functions of the system are executed. Now, the non-functional testing is a kind of testing which are not relating to testing specific functionality and it is designed to evaluate the readiness of a system accordingly to the various criteria which are not covered in the functional testing. Last but not least is the regression testing. This kind of testing is performed after upgrades or code fixes or any other system maintenance and check if the new changes affects the functionality of other methods. 
There are various test cases design techniques applied for black box testing, but the most used are the boundary value analysis. The boundary value analysis checks the software by creating test cases that use extreme values of data. This technique is used to find flaws and errors that arise due to the limits of input data. Secondly is the equivalence partitioning. This kind of testing check the input and the output by dividing the input into equivalent classes. The data must be tested at least once to uh, ensure the maximum test coverage of data. Last but not least is the state transitioning testing. This testing uses the input, the output and the state of the system due to the test phase. Uh, this test checks the software against sequence of transitions or events among the data. To understand better the black box testing techniques, let's see a shopping scenario. So at first we create a shop in which when we want to buy products in total up to $500, then we receive a discount of 5% and when we want to buy products in total up to $1,000, then we receive a discount of 7%. With the help of equivalence partitioning, we can divide the input into three partitions. The amount less than zero, the amount between zero and 500, and the amount between 501 and 1000. When binary value analysis added in the partition, the binary values are the 0, 500, 501 and 1000. With this technique, we can test the upper or the lower values and values like 1 uh, or minus 1 or 499 will be included. This helps us test the behavior of the input values in the software. Last but not least, according to the state uh, transition testing technique, when a buyer buys products in total up to $1,000 five times, his status gets changed from gold to platinum. White box testing is a software testing that it is based on the application internal code structure. It is also called as glass box technique or clear box technique, which these names represent the capability to see through the software outer shell into the inner workings. In white uh, box testing, an internal perspective of the system and programming skills are used to create test cases. Usually the testing it is done in unit level. In the testing, testers must have knowledge of the internal structure, the design and the code of the system under test to verify the input output uh, flow and to improve the design, security and usability. As we said before, white box testing is used to improve the usability, design and the security of a software. For this example, let's see the addition of two integers. So at first we create a new public class with a name white and we write a new method with a name first addition which has two parameters which are integers. Then we declare an integer variable with a name final number. We write a new for loop which does as many repetitions as the result of the addition of the two parameters and in it we copy the i value inside the final number. Last but not least we return the final number. After that, we create a new method, a new second method with name second addition, which add its two parameters and return the result. Last but not least, we create a main method. We call the two methods with the same parameter values and we run the program. As we can see, the result is a number 10, which is the same for the both of these two methods. But the code of the second addition method is simpler, easier to understand, and the first addition method takes up more processing time than the second addition method. So in white box testing, we will choose to use the second addition method. A white box testing technique can be executed with the help of three major techniques. These are the statement coverage, in which a code of instructions will remain a statement until it gets compiled for errors and become a part of internal code structure. This technique is helped to validate whether each and every line of code is executed at least once. Secondly is the branch coverage. This technique checks every single entity having a conditional loop around the decision points, uh, such as the if-else statements. And last but not least is the path coverage, which is more powerful than the statement coverage and the branch coverage, and verifies every single path of the program or software at least once. So let's see a programming example. The first thing that we need to do is to create a new public class with the name white techniques. At first, let's see how to use the statement coverage technique. 
For this technique, we need to create a test case to check all the lines of code. So, for this example, we need to declare a new public void method with a name addition which has two integer parameters. In this method, we add these two parameters and check if the result is bigger than 100. If it's true, then we print a text. Last but not least, we create the main method. We call this method with specific values in order to create a test case and we run the program. As we can see, the text was printed and we can understand that every line of code is executed. As now for the branch cover technique, we must check that every branch from its decision point of an if-else statement will be executed. So we add in addition method a new else statement. After that, we need to check if the number is more than 100. If it's true, then we print a text. Last but not least, in main method, we call again two times the addition method with specific values to create two test cases and we run the program. As we expected, the result ensures that each and every branch of each decision point is executed. Last but not least, to understand the path coverage technique, we need to add the if statement inside the addition method to check if the first parameter is bigger than the 50. If it's true, then we print a text. At path coverage technique, we need to check that all the paths of the program are traversed at least once. So we call the addition method four times to create four test cases with different values values because there are two decision statements and for every decision statement there are two branches that we need to test and we execute the program. As we set the output, all the paths are traversed at least once. Greybox testing is a software testing technique that tests software products or applications with partial knowledge of the internal structure. This kind of testing is the result from the combination of white box testing and the gray box testing. The purpose of the gray box testing is to search and identify the flex due to the improper code structure or the improper use of the application. In this process, context-specific errors that are related to the web systems are commonly identified because a gray box testing increases the test coverage by concentrating on all of the layers of any complex system. The gray box testing techniques are at first the matrix testing, which determines all the variables that exist in the program. Secondly, the regression testing, which checks if a change in the previous version regressed other aspects of the program in the new version. This could be done with the help of some test strategies such as retest all, retest all the risky test cases and retest with the help of the firewall. Also, the orthogonal array testing that provides maximum code coverage with minimum number of test cases. And last but not least, the pattern testing that performed in the historical data of the previous system deflects. Unlike the black box testing, the gray box testing digs within the code and determines why the failure happened. Last but not least, the main differences of white box testing and the black box testing are uh, at first, the white box testing can be performed by the developers in contrast with the black box testing that can be performed by test engineers. Secondly, to perform a white box testing, we should have an understanding of programming languages. Thirdly, the white box testing developers should know about the internal design and structure of the code. Also, in white box testing, we should look uh, into the code and test the code logic in contrast with the black box testing, in which we need to verify the functionality of the application or program based on the specifications of the requirements. And last but not least, the white box testing is more time consuming than the black box testing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. We have some really cool stuff coming up. Bye.